I say, if you want to measure the capacity of a cargo bike, see how many bodies it can fit. I think you could fit like one, probably two, if you really smush them in there. Definitely a couple of kids, but that's not what this thing's made for. It's made for carrying cargo. This is the Coaster Cycles Venture. It's a cargo bike. It's made specifically for carrying cargo. It's not made for carrying kids as many cargo bikes in the U.S. are. It can carry a lot of cargo, actually 400 pounds of capacity in the rear, 264 pounds for the rider. So considering most cargo bikes we offer have a weight capacity of somewhere between 100 and 200 pounds, a 400 pound capacity is pretty considerable. I think that that's really achievable because of the trike design so having the two wheels in the rear and one in the front now it does provide a little bit of a different handling characteristics so it's not really made for speed but it's got loads of capabilities beyond that and in many urban environments you can't go that fast anyway so it's definitely a good option for that. This type of three wheel platform is a good way to go if you really wanna maximize the capacity. So this box is pretty massive. It's 13.5 cubic feet and pretty nice uh, opening here. It's lockable, got these cool gas struts here and it's weather sealed as well. This one's called the Venture. They have another one called the Freighter, which is even larger. And they both have an all weather version, which has a cover on top for weather protection. Pretty interesting, actually, something that you don't really find so much for rider weather protection. I foresee this becoming more and more popular as cities start to adopt more bike infrastructure. This specifically has a 36 inch width, so it can fit in most bike lanes, but the freighter is 48 inches wide. So not the sort of thing that you're gonna ride in any sort of bike lane, but really massive and pretty impressive in what you can actually do with the bicycle. They have a lot of large commercial customers that they're working with, and it seems like there's a growing interest there. I think one of the biggest ones is Amazon, but there's many others that you'll see as well. So I suspect that we're gonna see a lot more of these out there, you know, for different types of parcels, last mile delivery, that sort of thing. That's actually where Coaster's got their background. Historically, we're just a pedicab company transporting people on bikes. And then they got into the cargo bike thing and they started doing cargo and they recognized, hey, this is a big opportunity and nobody's really doing it that well. And this is actually the first e-bike that we're reviewing that's made in the U.S. They have a massive facility in Montana and they're doing some next level stuff. So I haven't been out there to check them out yet, but I did see some videos online they're using like robotic welders. You could see them precision cutting the steel, really impressive stuff. So I appreciate that they're doing this and doing it next level. Level. And with their U.S. manufacturing, they're able to make some modifications to the bike as well. I mean, it's available with this box, but I know that they've made some different box configurations. For example, bird scooters, I think they built some that they're able to like rebalance scooters with it. So the frame of the bike is pretty much like a one size fits all. They come in this standard white color. I'm sure if you order enough of them, you could probably get some custom colors and that sort of thing. I mean, actually a lot of these things are potentially customizable. This is kind of the standard configuration. Really Really nice as it is and even like with the box and stuff like that you can do all sort of customizations inside of it even heard some people are like insulating them maybe they're carrying ice cream or other sort of cold things or warm things actually I think they were doing some pilots with bright pearl which is a company backed by GM and they actually have these insulated pods that they're delivering meals but they could deliver all sorts of different stuff I think in the future they might even have these things deploying some sort of like autonomous delivery. I don't know, there's there's all sorts of interesting stuff on the horizon, but I appreciate all the opportunities that something with this type of capacity can bring to this space, especially in a place like we are now, we're in New York City, there's more of a need for different types of vehicles to bring things around. And this is really a great last mile solution. And with this large capacity, I should note that it generally handles a little bit better when there's more weight in it. So that's something important to consider. But I found that if you lower the tire pressure a little bit, it handles better if you're not carrying as much weight. I think overall it might be for me, I'm just not riding a trike as much. And there is a bit of a learning curve there. So as I'm riding a little bit more, you get more comfortable because there's different things about actually riding a trike and the way that you handle it and the way that you turn. You're not going to lean into the turn as you might on a two-wheeled bike. So I think it's important just to be patient when you're starting out and just kind of take your time and just get used to it. Some other specs on the bike, it's got a Bosch cargo line motor, really loads of power, 500 watt hour battery, 
It's got a motorcycle brake in the rear, so really heavy duty, and then the Tektro hydraulic brakes up front, so really uh, pretty impressive. For the wheels on the bike, we have a 26 inch wheel up front and two 20 inch wheels in the rear. They all have the same tires. It's a Schwabi pickup, which is a tire made specifically for cargo bikes. Actually, the max load per tire is 160 kilograms or 353 pounds. One of the highest weight capacity tires out there. It can run between 30 and 65 PSI. You're gonna wanna run it on the higher end if you're gonna carry a lot of weight, but if you're not carrying that much weight, you might wanna lower it a little bit. It might also make the handling a little bit more comfortable because it can kind of add to the suspension a little bit. If you look at this wheel, if you look at other bike wheels, you might notice that it's pretty heavy duty. I mean, the rim on it is double wall aluminum and the wheels have 48 spokes, which really help to improve the strength of them a lot more than the normal 32 or 36 spoke cafe or frame lock up front, which is really nice. Great way to really secure the bike. Given the weight of the bike overall at 170 pounds, just locking this down is probably plenty to stop it from moving. And for the fork on the bike, we have this custom triple crown fork, something you might more commonly find on like a motorcycle or something like that. Makes it really solid and very stable in that way. And there's a pretty simple plastic fender here. I'd say if you're riding a lot in the rain, you might want to look into upgrading that a little bit, but definitely works for most conditions. It has a PNW headlight with 350 lumens, so it's pretty powerful and that runs off of the Bosch battery. You don't have to worry about charging or anything like that. And they have a completely custom tail light, which is really nice. For the motor on the bike, we have the Bosch Generation 4 cargo line, really heavy duty, up to 400% assistance and 85 Newton meters of torque really plenty of power for this type of cargo capacity and it's running to the Enviolo CBT so it's really uh, pretty easy to operate you just kind of twist the shifter with your wrist and you can go from low to high gear 380 percent gear range pretty heavy duty chain running underneath this chain glider to keep everything real clean and the motor on this bike uses a technology called pedal assist. So basically you pedal the bike and it provides assistance. It's really easy to operate. And the nice thing about that is you don't really have to think much about it. You just kind of feel stronger. You kind of feel like you're not carrying whatever cargo you might be. And it does all that with internal sensors. So inside the motor, there's a torque sensor sensing how hard you're pedaling. There's another sensing how fast you're pedaling. And then on the rear wheel, it's sensing how fast the bike's going overall. And it takes a thousand senses per second and based on the information, it provides assistance. So it can provide anywhere from a little to a lot, really depending on what you need and depending on what assistance level you choose. For the battery on the bike, we have the Bosch Power Pack 500, so it's 500 watt hours of power. You can easily carry another one along with you. You certainly have the cargo capacity to do that, and you could swap it whenever you need to. The nice thing about this also is that the key for the battery is the same as the frame lock up front, so it makes it really easy to manage that. There is a different Different key for the box in the rear though. And for the drivetrain, it's a continually variable transmission. It's continually variable, a little bit different than a traditional stepped gears. There's no individual steps to it, so basically you can adjust it. I kind of equate it to more like a volume dial than like a channel clicker. It works really well, really easy to operate for even less experienced riders. And you can see the rear wheel. 20 inches, 48 spokes, really heavy duty axle on here. Certainly up to some pretty heavy weight loads. So I wanna show you the brakes. Now you can see the front brake of the bike, but you can't really easily see the rear brake. So I wanna show you that. And there's kind of a handy way to do that where I can actually stand the bike up on its rear end. We're gonna do that. Basically, I'm gonna hold the rear brake. I should note, this is the first time I've done this. So you can judge like how easy it might be <laughs> based on how clumsy I'm gonna be doing this. But basically, you're gonna just go back like this. Not so bad so far. Let me not mess it up and make a fool of myself. But yeah, I'd say that's pretty manageable. And I think if, as long as you're relatively tall, you should probably have an easy time to do that. Or you could probably always get somebody to help you out and make it, might make it a little bit easier. But the important thing is to kind of lock that rear brake in order to really tilt it back. Otherwise, it's gonna kind of roll back on you. But you can see the brake here. The brake is actually a motorcycle brake made by a company called Willwood. Also a US company, really the first e-bike that I've seen with the motorcycle brake on it. So you have this drivetrain running into the, to the rear axles and look at this disc rotor and the heavy duty pads there. 
And you could see right here, these wires coming out of here, this is actually where the rear brake light is actuated. So they're running the sensor directly from the brake caliper, which is pretty interesting. Certainly the first time I've seen that running there. And there's actually a differential here, which allows the wheels to kind of spin independently. And this is really important if you're going to go on a turn, the outside and the inside wheels are gonna spin at different rates and the differential helps to accommodate for that. So this is really important. And you can see the really heavy duty feet in the back. That's what allows it to stand up. That's actually how the bike arrives. It arrives fully assembled, which is quite cool. We can ship these really throughout the US and that's really convenient. And you can see the graphics on here. This is actually something that Coaster does in house so they can do all sorts of different graphic packages. So the saddle on here is pretty comfortable. You know, got some cushion there. Imagine it's good for a cargo bike good amount of support, relatively wide. You're gonna sit in a pretty upright seating position. So having a relatively wide saddle on here is nice. Probably would recommend getting a suspension seat post. I think that this bike could benefit from that. There's a couple different ones out there. The one that's most popular for us is the Connect seat post. Really nice, it has swappable springs. You can really dial in the comfort there. So for the handlebars on this bike, you might notice they're very different than what we might find on other bikes. This design, which is a little bit more common in a motorcycle or even actually some older BMX bike, it's got the Bosch and Tuvia display. This is where you get all the details about the electric system. Right now it's on the max speed and you could just hit the info button. You could see some different things like average speed, trip time, the range. This range is gonna tell you based on what assistance level you're in, which you can see the assistance level here. It's in eco mode showing 18 miles, probably a little bit more than that, but right now it just really depends on how efficiently you're pedaling. And you can see the range will change as you go up in the assistance levels. Keep in mind, we only got three out of five bars battery. It's where you see the miles per hour. Tap this, you can turn the light off. And then if you wanted to reset the tripometer, just hold this reset button down just for a couple of seconds. That's the, the basic details of the display. You can also remove it, just like a little lever there. So, And to control the display, we have everything up here. So you're gonna use just kind of the plus and minus to change the assist level, info to cycle through. And then we also have what's called the walk assist button. Basically, you're gonna like tap that and hold it down. That allows you just to push it along a little bit. So that's good if the trike is fully loaded and you're just kind of walking, say, through a crowded area or something like that, and you don't wanna to have to actually push the trike, really just walking alongside it, and the motor is kind of gonna do that work for you. You can see really heavy duty bell up here. So for the rear brake on the bike, we have this special Willwood kind of motorcycle brake, and there's actually a lock on it. So if you kind of just pull this in, you can just clip it in place and that'll hold the lever in place. But there's also a lock on the front brake as well. Also a hydraulic disc brake. This is a Tektro Auriga disc brake, and it has a lock right here. And you can see the Enviolo shifter here. Basically, if you shift away from you, this is going to be easier to ride. So the idea is when you're starting out, you're in that low gear and that hill gear. And as you twist it towards you, you're gonna go into a higher gear. But the nice thing about this is you can shift it when you're not pedaling, something that's kind of unique to an internally geared hub like this system. You're generally not gonna to wanna to shift it under load while you're pedaling. You wanna let off your pedaling a little bit, allow it to engage into the appropriate gear. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed kind of walking through this and just kind of conceptualizing more and more what we might do with this bike, some of the different people we might help to introduce this to. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about more of this commercial stuff. I think we're gonna get into that more. I'm interested to know what your thoughts are. What's your experience? Do you wanna see more of this? Do you wanna see more bikes like this? What do you think you would like to see this thing do? Because you know, there's definitely a lot of opportunities that are not really possible with some of the, the other bikes that we make available. So um, let us know and uh, I'll see you next time.